Hi everyone, I'm Chang Wen for Gotta Be Mobile, and in this video review, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Novatel My5 500 LTE mobile hotspot for Sprint's 4G LTE network. The My5 500 connects to either Sprint's 3G CDMA eVideo network connection or to Sprint's faster 4G LTE network where that is available. 4G LTE is equivalent to mobile broadband and gives you uh, access to Sprint's faster uh, network speeds. So you can connect, um, basically this device connects to Sprint's network, whether it be 3G or 4G, and then it broadcasts the network over a a Wi-Fi signal so you can connect up to 10 other devices to the network. So if you have a tablet, a smartphone, a PC or a laptop without an integrated uh, network modem or connectivity card inside it, you can connect those devices via Wi-Fi to Sprint so you can have uh, mobile internet anywhere where you know a, a traditional Wi-Fi mobile hotspot isn't available or if you're not near a Starbucks or McDonald's with one. In this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Novatel uh, My5 500, and then we're going to go ahead and explore some of the features and the settings of the device. So let's go ahead and take a look at the hardware itself. On the front of the device, you do have this uh, glossy piano black plastic. It does attract a fair amount of fingerprint and lint on the device itself. You can see here there's a blinking LED light to tell me that the device is on and connected to Sprint's network. Um, here's the power button. If you press and hold it, it's going to turn on and off the device. And if you just uh, tap on it or press light or press and not hold, it's going to turn on and off just the display itself. So you do have an AMOLED display on the front. Um, on, on the display itself, it's a monochrome display, so you're not gonna see any colors, and it's gonna give you basic uh, menu options and settings for the device itself. So here we're on the main home screen. It's showing me that I'm connected to Sprint 3G. I only have Sprint 3G um, inside my house downstairs, but I'm able to get a weaker 4G LTE connection upstairs. I'm in San Jose, California, so right now um, Sprint hasn't officially announced um, 4G LTE network speeds or uh, 4G LTE network here in my area, but I'm able to connect to it as Sprint lights up the network. Um, so that's a nice feature. The device does have um, sort of a rectangular shape with uh, curved edges and a rounded corners, which is um, nice. Um, and on the side and on the black, you have a matte gray that's uh, coated in a textured rubberized uh, finish. So it does help the device stay on a flat surface or a slippery surface and not slide off. It does have four little uh, pegs here for feet. So um, it does help in having the device grip and stay on a table itself. On the top side of the device, you do have a micro USB 2.0 port. Um, the nice thing about this device is you can either plug in the device to a wall outlet and leave it there and forget about it and use it just as a router or a modem itself at home, or you can connect it if you have a PC and don't want to use uh, Wi-Fi. You can connect a USB port or a cable to the port here and connect it to your PC or laptop and then use the device as an Ethernet uh, connection rather than a Wi-Fi connection. When you're on Wi-Fi, you can connect up to 10 devices. So think of all the smartphones, tablets, uh, smart cameras, um, your car, uh, tablets, uh, notebooks, laptops, anything you can think of with a, with a Wi-Fi connection, you can connect up to 10 devices and share Sprint's 4G LTE network. To remove the battery door, all you would have to do is uh, push in on this tab here on the back and just pull out this rather flexible battery door cover. And it's gonna reveal a rather capacious 1800 milliamp hour battery, which lasts for about uh, 10 hours of moderate use uh, without intensive video streaming. So between video and web, you're gonna get about eight to 10 hours of use on this 1800 milliamp hour battery. And once you pull out the battery, you're gonna see here, there's a slot for Sprint's uh, micro SIM card. The micro SIM card is required to you, uh, for this device, which is a rather different approach than what Sprint had been using before. So now the 4G LTE connectivity is actually tied to the SIM card, whereas before it wasn't. And the SIM card on previous devices was used only for, uh, wi for uh, GSM roaming when you're traveling international. So that's, a different approach that Sprint's taking 
on the MiFi 500 LTE um, device. Go ahead and try and replace the battery door and it just snaps into place. So I'm gonna go ahead and power on the device and then allow it to um, power on and then we're gonna go ahead and explore some of the settings on the device's menu itself. So it does take a few seconds to fully power up. Um, you do see the LED blinking here on the side. So this is what it looks like. It's gonna give you, um, now it's connected to Sprint LTE. It's gonna give you your signal strength. So I only have barely a bar of signal here on LTE and battery life on the main screen. There's a menu button. So if you hit this button, it's gonna activate the menu button and there are uh, navigation keys here to navigate between different pages once you're in a screen. So let's go ahead and go into the Wi-Fi um, settings and, it's, and if you hit OK again, it's gonna give you both your network um, access name, so that's your SSID and your password. So you're gonna go ahead and wanna connect um, your tablet to the Sprint My5 500 um, 1E4. Um, so I have a tablet here, I have the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 and let's go ahead and take a look and see where, so that's the network and then um, I've connected this tablet before so all, all I would need to do is just hit connect but if I, have, if I had not done that it would ask me for this uh, Wi-Fi password and all I would need to do is enter it in here. So it's built into the firmware. You're not gonna have to worry about losing the MiFi password or forgetting it so you have ready access to it. Um, and then you're gonna have to hit more to scroll through all the menu options before you can exit out of the screen. So that's a rather inconvenient in that you had have to go through the entire um, menu page before you can access the next menu page. It's going to show you how many devices you have connected to the device. So right now I have one device connected to the MiFi 500. Um, it's going to give you mobile network access information. So and the nice thing about this device is you don't even have to connect it to a computer and enter in the web interface in order to access the um, software update. So you can automatically download and update the firmware for the My5500 directly from the device. All you would have to do is go into the software update menu and it's gonna check for the update, download and install directly um, on the device from the device. And if you have a WPS connection on a, another device, you can actually enter in a Wi-Fi protected setup and not have to worry about um, the network key if you don't want to. So now because my 4G LTE signal was rather weak, it's uh, switched me over to Sprint's 3G con connection. And as you can see here on the Galaxy Tab 10.1 2014 edition, I am connected to the MiFi. 500. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my browser and I am going to go into the web interface. All you would have to do is enter 192.168.1.1 and it's going to give you um, various different options for further customization of the device itself. So from here, you can check how much data you've used so far on the device, um, what your account is like. So it gives you quick shortcuts from the main homepage. If you wanna go in and manage your different settings, it's gonna ask you for your administrative password. By default, the My5500 is set up to use admin, A-D-M-I-N as the password. Um, you can go ahead and change that if you wish, but be sure to make a note of what you change it to because if you forget the password and enter in the wrong password too many times, it's gonna lock you out. 
And from the settings, you can control how many devices are connected to it. If you wanna change your Wi-Fi password, you can go ahead and do it here. So if you have a special name or something that's easier to remember, you can go ahead and change that. You can also change your SSID name so it broadcasts something else if you don't like the default name that it comes with. So you can say this is uh, my Sprint MyFi if you want to. Additionally, you can also limit how many devices are connect, can connect to it. So even if, you have, if you're taking this on a work trip, you have 15 colleagues and you only want two of them to connect at any given time, um, you can limit it to only two devices or two connections to the uh, MiFi 500. Um, and why you would want to do this is because if you have more devices connected to the MiFi 500, it's going to A, um, reduce the uh, the speeds between each different devices. So if you have two devices, you're sharing um, the overall speeds between two different devices, whereas if you had 10 devices connected, you would have to share uh, the same speed over 10 devices. So each device would be a little bit slower on the network than if you were to have fewer devices connected. Also, if you have more devices connected, it's gonna drain the battery life faster. If you have one device, connected, you're looking at between, uh, I would say, 7 and 10 hours of uh, battery life when I use the device continuously. So, um, and it all depends on the usage. If you're just browsing web pages, it's going to be uh, more battery efficient than if you were to stream a video or download um, large files and content. And then you can also have access to advanced settings, you can set up your DNS routing, you can, there are a number of different setups and options for this port filtering, and then you can even access a SIM and have a SIM card lock if you want as well. So this is the uh, web interface for the MiFi 500 LTE. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open the speed test app. Um, we are, of note, connected to Sprint's uh, 3G connection, and it's a fairly strong connection. So let's go ahead and try and see how the speed test performs. So while this is going on, I just want to talk a little bit more about the device. This is one of the first devices to make use of Sprint's uh, tri-mode LTE setup. So whereas other carriers like Verizon Wireless and AT&T Mobility um, locks LTE to a single frequency, Sprint's using three different frequencies or band on the back end to power the MiFi 500. So what this means for consumers is that depending if you're indoors or outdoors, if you're you know, using the device for heavy streaming or for moderate or light uh, data use, um, and your location, time of day, proximity to the cell tower, just various different factors, um, Sprint can route your connection to the most efficient uh, band. So. If you're indoors, you might be using one uh, band, whereas if you're outdoors or if you move outdoors, uh, Sprint can switch you to a different band. So this uh, alleviates some of the network traffic and strain, and it gives you the fastest and most reliable connection to Sprint's 4G LTE or CDMA network where applicable. Right now though, um, on the uh, Sprint 3G connection, you can see that the network speeds aren't that great. We're getting between uh, just 0.22 megabits per second uh, average on the download speed, and we're getting about one megabits per second on the upload speed, and the ping rate, the latency rate, is 305 uh, millisecond, which isn't too great. On Sprint's 4G LTE speed, um, I'm in San Jose, California, so the network isn't fully deployed yet, but Sprint's giving anyone with the device access to the network before it's officially announced. So even with one bar of connectivity, I'm getting between three and five megabits per second on the download side, and between uh, one and three megabits per second on the upload side. So 4G LTE speed, even in San Jose when it's not fully deployed yet, is significantly better than 3G speed. So this device is probably most effective for users in Sprint's 4G LTE uh, connectivity areas. So if you're not in a 4G LTE connectivity, um, you're gonna probably be on 3G and the speeds aren't the best here on 3G, but um, it will do in, an, in a pinch if you're out in the field remotely working and you need access to data, to your emails or applications, um, you can connect to the Sprint network and it will be fine. 
So while the device does look substantial given its uh, thick, um, its thickness here, um, it actually is rather lightweight and feels really great in the hands. Um, it's great, light, easy to carry and travel. You can slip it in a pocket, a purse, or a bag, and you likely won't even feel it at all. Um, hopefully with the MiFi 500 LTE, you're in a Sprint 4G connectivity area and you'll be able to benefit off of Sprint's uh, data speeds on the faster network. I'm Chang Wen for Gotta Be Mobile. In the meantime, uh, be sure to tune in to gottabemobile.com to uh, see the full review of the MiFi 500 LTE and check out our other content and coverage. Until next time, thanks for watching.